Hey guys, Paul here, and I've got a very fun project that I'm excited to share with you today. It's a serving tray. I designed this about 15 years ago now uh, as a way to produce a serving tray in the same style as the ones that you see that are plowed out with a router, uh, removing a lot of material. And I wanted to make more efficient use of the expensive stock. Uh, and so I designed this one to be built kind of as a starting point like a, a cutting board and then the sides and ends are built up uh, rather than a removal process so it's, it's efficient uh, I think these are it's a very beautiful design and it's a good way to incorporate small pieces of scrap wood that you might have around your shop so without further ado let's dive in and I'll show you how to build one of these for yourself first phase of the project is something you're probably pretty familiar with, just ripping thin strips uh, and essentially making up a cutting board. Uh, I went for a, a cutting board size of about 11 and a half wide by 22 inches long. Uh, the 11 and a half wide is uh, so that it would fit through a typical lunchbox planer, which is usually 12 or 12 and a half inches wide. Then just typical clamp up uh, procedure, wipe it down good, scrape it, and then once it's uh, ready to go and the glue is good and dry, run it through a planer. Now I use this planer from Laguna because it is uh, gives me a really good snipe-free surface. And the snipe-free is going to be important when we do the glue up. Uh, then I'm cutting off the ends to trim it up. And then cutting off a two and a half inch section at each end. Then you're going to want to carefully mark it so that you get good alignment with your panel because it's that's going to be very important so that the seams and the grain line up perfectly as you look at it uh, from the end of your serving tray. Then I'm marking a one inch uh, section that I'm going to use to glue and attach one inch overlap of the pieces that we just cut off on the table saw. Being really careful to line that up right on the line. We want that to be as straight as possible. Also be very careful on the registration so that you're your seams line up with the contrasting wood strips. Then just make sure you get very good alignment of the end grain to the baseline that you drew on the panel and then carefully glue making sure you get the clamping pressure straight down so that those pieces don't slide around and goof up your registration that you worked so hard to achieve. Then a good scraping with that screwdriver to clean the glue out of that corner. You don't want any glue residue left behind, especially with that end grain so exposed there. Then after that glue cures, uh, run it through the jointer a couple times on each side to make sure you get a perfect glue alignment. It feels a little awkward running that big panel through the jointer, uh, but really it's going to be well worth it because you're going to get a perfect seam that way. Then I'm gluing 3 8 inch wide strips onto each side and this is going to form the depth of the, of the serving tray. Then carefully gluing those in to get good registration on the bottom as well as the top. And again cleaning out that glue residue. Alright, now I'm going to draw some lines to mark where I'm going to make the bandsaw cuts on the handle. Uh, the, the approach that I take is not highly precise or scientific. Uh, I've got a baseline drawn across here uh, that is one inch from the edge. So if you remember, the overlap was one inch. So that puts me roughly at the edge of the uh, end grain uh, on the bottom panel. So I've got that line drawn and then I've got a couple witness marks on each side to, to mark where the handle is going to uh, end on each side. I wanted to uh, not have a seam here so I kept uh, a good piece of maple, a quarter inch of maple on each side. That handle is probably four inches wide or so. Doesn't matter, uh, give or take is fine. So what I'm going to do is use a precision drawing template uh, in a form of a roll of tape and I'm going to put it carefully on my witness mark here and on the baseline 
and draw a curve. Okay, that's the curve that I want. Uh, and I'll cut to that and sand to that uh, to form the handle. Now, uh, I'm going to use another precision uh, drawing tool uh, for the outside curve over here. I don't want to use the tape roll over there because it's too large of a radius and you want to make sure to leave plenty of wood on this joint here. Uh, you don't want to let that get too skinny and that can happen. So, uh, I'm using this smaller radius curve uh, in the form of a uh, tight bond 3 glue bottle. And there you go. All right, that's it. I'm just going to do that on all four corners and then we'll take it over to the bandsaw. Now I have a blade on my bandsaw that is 5 eighths of an inch wide, which is way too wide for cutting these kind of tight curves. So rather than swapping the blade out to just make these few cuts, I'm going to leave it in and I made a series of relief cuts, as you saw, that were coming up almost to the line, maybe an eighth or a sixteenth inch shy of the line uh, and that lets me make the curve cuts and back off as needed uh, but get right through the cut and it's not leaving a perfect certainly uh, surface behind but what I'm going to do is clean it up after the cut on a oscillating belt sander anyway which is really going to clean up all those cut marks and shape it so I'm not concerned about a super uh, clean cut right off the bandsaw that uh, worked out great now I'm using a rasp to shape the handle. This is a different approach for me. I've done this using a, a bandsaw and a, uh, as well as a, a dado blade, but I decided to try it with a rasp this time. I thought it worked out pretty well. It was kind of satisfying to, to do that. So if you want to give it a try, I'll give you a link to the rasp set that I have uh, down below. And these things work great. They're very economical. And then just kind of sweetening everything up with a with a palm sander uh, and smoothing out any imperfections left by the rasp. Then applying a couple coats of wipe on polyurethane, which is kind of my go-to finish for a lot of this, these uh, types of projects. It gives great durability uh, and a nice sheen on the project. Uh, I probably put three coats on, light sanding in between each coat, and it looked really nice when it was all done. All right, that about wraps this one up. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and come back to the Toolmetrics channel for more woodworking, wood turning, and DIY related videos. Meanwhile, feel free to ask any questions down below. I'll answer whatever I can. Good luck if you give this one a try.